Ryan Schultz here from E39 Source. Welcome back to the channel. That's my 2000 E39 M5. No, it is not for sale. This one is though. I'm super excited to bring this car to market. It's the first one we are doing so with. In this video, we're gonna walk around the car. I'll show you inside, show you outside, talk about the spec, the condition, some upgrades and some service that I've completed on this car in the couple months that I've been uh, been working on it. So uh, we've taken apart four cars here at E39 Source so far, wrecked E39 M5s, and each one I do, people love to leave lots of comments about why don't you fix them and why don't you put them back on the road and of course preservation is the end goal um, so we're taking a little bit different um, approach in bringing this car to market after it has been fully gone over by e39 source and essentially that's me and you guys have seen nate in some videos on this car he's been excellent in coming down here on some weekends and helping me change some fluids or uh, do, do some diys on this car and, and we've certainly done a lot of them so it starts with this, and we're going to have a little bit of story time here. Ten years ago, uh, it'll be ten years this July, I purchased this 2000 E39 M5 as my own in Ohio. And uh, I very quickly learned at 16 years old with no experience working on cars that uh, I in no way was able to afford to take this car to a dealer to have an oil change done or to have brakes done or to figure out what's wrong with the check engine light and turn it off. So I kind of went to the internet and I thought, I'm a resourceful person, let's try to figure this out. And uh, you know, it's not rocket science, it's a car. And I was so disappointed with the kind of content that I found online. So I decided to make my own content, to make the content that I wanted to see to fill the void uh, that I felt there was in E39 M5 DIYs, maintenance, technical um, documents, all of that sort of stuff. And fast forward 10 years and here we are, we're out in California, we're having a blast. Um, so when I got this car, all my friends came and rode in it and looked at it and drove it and they're like, damn, I need one of those things too. And they were all in the same boat then within the next couple of years. They're all in the market for an E39 M5 and, and we pretty quickly discovered that you can buy one for seven or 10 or 12 or $15,000 and it's great and it's a great car, but it needs another seven or 10 or 12 or $15,000 to make it right, to get the right wheels on it, the right tires on it, the right headlights, to fix the leak, to fix the, the worn suspension components, to get it driving and sounding and acting as designed. And this car represents an excellent opportunity to buy a car where all of that stuff's done. This car doesn't leak anything. It doesn't make any bad noises. It has the right wheels. It has the right tires. The brakes are good. It doesn't have any warning lights or codes or trouble codes or anything you need to be worried about. This is a turnkey, drive it to New York City and back from San Diego if you want kind of car. And I'm super excited to make it available here on E39 Source. So let's start with kind of a kind of a walk around. We'll talk about the specs and the upgrades and, and everything I mentioned a moment ago. Uh, this is a 2000 M5 produced April 19th, 2000. So it's uh, kind of a mid-cycle 2000, two months newer than mine. Mine's a February. Uh, finished in titanium silver metallic, which is a common color on this car for good reason. It is a very clean, classy, stately, and understated look for this car. Uh, we have a couple options. It's actually nearly identically optioned to my personal car. So we have rear parking sensors that uh, maybe you noticed there on the walk around. Maybe you can get a look at that. And of course, anything I show you in this video is 100% functioning as designed, um, including the parking sensors. Yes, I had to replace the sensor, one of the inner ones. It was fun, now it works, it's great. It's an OEM BMW sensor painted in titanium silver. We also see that it does not have the uh, trunk lid spoiler delete or the badge delete. Those were two options. So both of those are still in place from the factory. And then the other option that my car also has are the split folding rear seats, which just really add to the usability and the practicality of this car. I've carried a bicycle, two bumpers, a full set of wheels, huge framed art that went in my dining room back in Ohio. All this stuff can fit in this car with the pull of a lever. And it's a 60-40 split, so that's the 40% of it. And uh, we've got the ski bag in there too. So if you really want to take a road trip from San Diego and go skiing, you could do that. As we can see on the interior here, uh, at first glance, it looks like the same interior that's in my car. However, it is not. This is actually one of the coolest things about this car. So this is called 06 SS. Mine's called 05 SS. What's the difference? This is extended leather. This is full leather. There's a lot of misconceptions, even in the enthusiast, the E39 M5 enthusiast community uh, that don't quite understand the difference. So in order to better understand the difference, let's take a look at mine. I'm going to take a look at my door panel and we'll see that it's extended 
banded leather. What does that mean? Over the base 5 series at the time, or the standard 5 series available in 2000, you had the 528 and you had the 540. And they had this rugged, uh, durable vinyl material all over the place, including these armrest pads on the door panel. Excuse the dirty door panel right now. It is in need of a detail, I know. Um, so the M5 was extended. The leather was extended onto this part of the panel, the entire center console, and the center console armrest is all in stitched leather. That is called extended leather. The rest of the interior, the dashboard, upper and lower, uh, the top and the bottom part of the door panels, the lower B pillars, the steering column trim, all of that is just standard E39. Nothing wrong with it. But there was a better option available called full leather. And I think the lighting will be a little bit better over here, so let's try that. I apologize, we're working in the shadows here. I wanted to keep the audio good so we're still in the shop. We'll get a look at this front door panel and we'll notice that like the luxury cars that came in the facelift and beyond, everything down there is in beautiful stitched leather. Everything. The top part of the panel, of course the armrest and the ostrich prints as we like to call it, uh, sport inserts down here around the memory button, everything's in leather. The entire dashboard upper and lower, and the glove box is in stitched leather. The steering column trim is leather. Like, why did we need that? Why not though? Leather steering column trim. Lower B pillars, leather. And then the transmission tunnel as well, just like in my car, this part's leather, but they extended it. Where mine goes to carpet down here on these little side panels, that is also in leather on both sides. So this car is just cocooned in leather, and it is a lovely place to be. The headliner, of course, is the Alcantara. That was standard on the full leather cars, optional on the extended leather cars. I got lucky on mine that mine even has it, uh, but it was standard here in this car, seeing that it's a full leather car. The original trim in here was the Briarwood Club, which I still have. I removed it. It's sitting inside the shop in excellent condition. Every piece of it, I think there was one crack in like the corner of this dashboard finisher, something super minor. I can include that in the sale or swap it back in if you want the car to match the build sheet. Personally, I think the Titan trim that I fitted in here is a much better look for the car. Even did the leather e-brake handle and the leather um, OEM BMW leather illuminated shift knob. Just a little touch that, uh, in my opinion, looks a lot better. But as I said, I'm happy to swap that back out if you want that to be original to the car. While we're inside, I suppose we might as well spend some time in here. Uh, we can see that it has the original 2000 black gauges. Kind of a rare thing to see these days. And the fun part about the gauges, look at that. All the pixels work. Now in full disclosure, over the 2,500-ish miles I've driven this car, um, there's been one time where maybe around the B or the E in belts, there's a vertical row of pixels that has been hit and miss. Um, it's rare, and honestly, you really have to look at it to notice it. It's not enough to, to warrant or to justify a replacement to me. Uh, so we're gonna leave that with the 2000 black gauges, which are just rare these days. Now, as you can see, the uh, navigation screen has been updated from 2000 to the 16 by nine navigation display. And we do have a Mark IV navigation computer in here. We'll see it'll be SW4, that means Mark IV, on the latest software installed. So that's great. You don't have to update any of the navigation equipment. It's ready to go. I also retrofit Homelink, so this M5 is all ready to go and to be programmed to your garage door opener. Try to get a better look at the back seat. We can see all the leather back here is really nice and clean and just not torn up, no dogs, no big scratches and scuffs. Um, really was very pleased to see the kind of condition this interior is in. It is not perfect. This is a car with 138,200 miles, uh, but it's certainly very good. Every seat motor works in every direction. They all sound great, work at the normal speed. Uh, so that's a thing we certainly look for. You know, I've spent a lot of time around the E39 in the past 10 years, so I kind of know the things to, uh, to look for that are common failure points. And uh, this car doesn't have any of those, which I'm super, super happy about. We'll take a look at the rear center console here. We've got the climate control, and then this one has the, the cubby. Rear cup holders were optional. This car didn't come with those, so it's got the, uh, the proper cubby back there. Of course, the full leather's in the rear as well. Uh, I love the rear little storage pockets there. That's where you see the stitch line. Um, if you're not trained what to look for, you won't 
really notice that uh, everything back here is leather until you touch it or, or realize that it's so much softer than the relatively grainy vinyl that uh, that most of the sport cars have. Um, actually, in 2001, BMW did away with this option for this interior. This is a one of 225 car in this um, with this interior for the North American market. It was only available in the year 2000. For 2001, BMW decided that the full leather cars should be the uh, luxury cars, and they had a different interior, different door panels, and different seats, and in some cases, uh, a different leather. Um, so this is this is a rare one to have the sport interior with everything fully wrapped in leather. The front passenger side, um, it's the case all throughout the car, but this is the easiest one to film. It does have the genuine BMW M5 floor mats installed in excellent condition. So we'll take a seat in here, we'll look in the glove box and find the owner's manual in the M pouch. And uh, let's try, try to get a view inside here, which is difficult with one hand, but uh, we've actually got a facelift owner's manual for the E39 M5. And then we do have the owner's manual for the 16x9 display as well, uh, which I showed you before. Otherwise, inside the glove box, we've got the flashlight installed in the flashlight charging receptacle, uh, right where it would have been from factory. I know somebody will point it out, so I'll just take the time to mention it now. The switch panel in this car uh, is incorrect. It is including a rear sunshade button, which this car does not and has never had. I have the proper panel on the way, and that'll be going in on Tuesday. So um, it'll be the same thing, minus that button. Back to the outside now. We'll kind of continue the walk around. We've got the right wheel on this car. This is the right style 65 E39 M5 genuine BMW wheel with the wider pair in the back compared to the front. And we've got the right tire on there. This is a Michelin Pilot Sport All Season 3, uh, 275 35ZR18 rear and 245-40ZR18 up front. If you want to see some specifics on exactly what kind of tread is left on uh, each axle, um, please look at the description below this video. I will include a link to the Craigslist ad there where I've just included everything I'm talking about here today. Come down the passenger side of the car, nice um, nice clean body. This is not a perfect mint condition showroom car. This is a driver car. This is a car that's had everything done, that's ready to get out on the road, that's ready to see some trouble-free miles and just be enjoyed. It isn't flawless. I have gone over the car with, um, with a clay bar, so the paint and clear coat's in nice condition. Uh, paint's really smooth and glossy. Come around up front and see that the front headlights have been facelifted. Did that myself. These are Hella headlight housings with fresh adjusters inside and very new DJ Auto clear European style lenses. So no stone chips, no fading, no yellowing. Uh, just really crisp, clean, clear headlights. Come down this side to get a look at the condition of the wheels. They do appear to have been refinished in the past, um, but whoever did it did a solid job. These are a nice, nice clean set of wheels with no significant curbing or damage on any of them. Around to the rear, we see the 2000 taillights only, the PDC, which I think I talked about before. We'll take a look inside the trunk, see that it is nice and clean, comes with the factory BMW cargo net still in place. There's that Mark IV navigation computer. You can always tell the Mark IV because it's got the DVD logo on there. The rest of the equipment in here, we have the six disc BMW CD changer. That's a C43 radio and the DSP amplifier back there. And then of course the DSP Nokia uh, subwoofers. And then I have a fresh set of the 2015 DVDs as well, both both East and Western United States, both of which include um, all of Canada and Mexico. So uh, both will be included in the sale. You'll have the latest available uh, DVDs for the NAV. Behind the right oddment store, we just see clean chassis. No rust, no damage, factory PDC module. Everything is right where it's supposed to be. And I always like to check out a couple things on the trunk lid here. We've got the right uh, little illustration of three stowed golf bags in the correct place. We've got the right sticker and then the toolkit, which includes most, but not all of the available tools. It is missing only the lug wrench and the wheel hanging tool, assisting tool that um, often disappears. Really common place to check for rust on these cars is right there under the BMW badge, um, around the license plate lights or around the release handle. And uh, this car doesn't have any of that. And it's also got really good stabilist lift-a-mat struts too. I didn't even have to replace those. 
usually those things are real weak by now. This one closes really well too. We just bring it about three inches and give it a good push. Come back in the driver's side, we'll pop the hood and take a look at the glorious S62 5 liter 32 valve dual overhead cam, all the descriptors. V8, done a little bit of maintenance on this, certainly a good bit of cleanup under here. Definitely wasn't bad when we got it, I just knew how to improve it a little bit. A um, couple things I'll point out are the firewall trim. It's really, really, really common that the firewall trim right there by that little fastener uh, gets really brittle and weak and breaks apart and just crumbles and then you've got a big old hole there. That's not the case with this car. Those parts are solid. Also notice that there's a sticker on the ABS module indicating that it's been rebuilt from Module Master. Uh, so as I mentioned before, there's no lights, no warning codes, no troubles, nothing you've got to be concerned about. Um, my guess is that module failed at some point in the past and it was rebuilt. I had the same company rebuild mine and it's been solid for years. I'll talk more about the maintenance I've done when I get to that portion of the video, but it's a really nice clean, nice clean engine. It's also worth noting that the original belly pan and front fender liners, or pork chops as we like to call them, are all still in place on this car, complete with the temp sensor. Everything that's supposed to be here is here. It's really rare to find those on, uh, on these cars still. They all get ripped off, but this car still has all of that, including the transmission pan in the center as well. Let's demo some features. Well, I've got the key in here. Uh, there's a lot of things that are super common on these cars not to work. We already talked about the pixels, and I've shown you that that's not a, a concern on this car. Um, let's go ahead and start it up and turn some lights on. And uh, we see that the lights you want to come on do, and the lights you want to go off also do. Once I put a seatbelt on, that is. And there it goes. We've got no warnings no check control buzzers, all the crap you usually see when you're looking at cars and it's complaining, none of that is here on this car, which is excellent. All the pixels work here, all the buttons work, heated seats work, sport button works, DSC, goes off when you don't want it and comes on when you do. I already talked about the sunshade button, uh, that heated seat as well, rear defroster, front defroster, all the different zones. It's all here and working as designed. Another very common thing you see are these uh, center vents will crack either here or here. And that's not the case with this one. No cracks. Operation's nice and smooth. And you'll notice that even the, uh, the little red dot there isn't too faded. Usually these, uh, these cars, those things just turn beige. Got to turn that off. It is 68 degrees and certainly don't need a heated seat. You can see the illumination in the shifter there. It's nice and red as factory design, and I love to show people this. Look at this. We have working cup holders in an E39. As designed. We've even got that thing springs open slowly. A lot of times the spring fails and then it just flips up. Nope, that's how it's supposed to be. Same thing with the glove box. Lowers nice and slowly. The E39 has auto up and down front and rear windows. And all of them in this car work as designed, quietly, no ugly noises, one touch operation. Uh, it's actually a really, really common thing for E39s to suffer from, our bad window regulators, and all of these work, including the sunroof. Open, closed, and in tilt mode. Another good thing to look at is the rear view mirror. A lot of times you'll see a big bubble up here where the seal and the mirror has failed. Not the case on this car. So look at the headlights while they're on. I lowered the door here in the shop so we can get a kind of a cleaner view. I uh, left the original halo bulbs in there. If uh, a prospective owner would prefer the white LEDs, I'd be happy to swap those out. But those are the factory D2S xenon bulbs. The brights, the fogs, the signals, the reverse lights, everything, everything, everything works on this car. The 2000 S62 makes a little bit of Vanos noise, as I'm sure you guys know, but 
Um, it's nothing to be concerned about with long-term engine reliability, performance, or efficiency. I just have a little bit of a grumble. Let's go ahead and talk about maintenance. I will make a public version of this spreadsheet available in the description below. Please be sure to check that out, but I am extremely meticular when it comes to documenting everything about a car. When it was produced, every single part that has gone on it, every part number, what the part cost, where it came from, how many miles were on it when it was installed, when it was installed, any notes about installation, any, any, anything like that is documented and then color-coded. As you can see, orange represents fluid changes, purple or brakes, blue are changes in owner. Everything's here. And uh, I'm going to take a couple minutes now and kind of go around the car and show you what I've done to it, what we've changed. There's a couple of things underneath that uh, I'm not going to put it up on a lift today. But anything and everything that I found underneath that was missing, showed anywhere, wasn't right, was aftermarket, whatever, has all been gone over and dialed in to exactly what this car would have been when it was produced. And, and the first thing that I found wrong with this car, these little mud flaps right here, were missing. So I replaced them. It's got the right aerodynamic spats, as Nate calls them, little mud flaps, whatever they are, are back in place. The next thing I did a couple months ago was completely overhaul the parking brake. Uh, the cables themselves were intact. Somebody had even fitted new shoes and hardware in the rear, but you could pull the lever all the way up and it, it would barely hold the car on the slightest of inclines. I hate that. Uh, these parking brakes are not that challenging to get working if you have a lift and some experience with them. So here I'm proud to say that, what is that, four or five clicks is nice and tight and we'll hold this car on whatever sort of incline you can find. I haven't found one yet, but that doesn't hold it still. One of the first things I found wrong was that the original rear window seal was cracking and showed definite signs of age. So I replaced that. I actually did a video on the channel about it. So we've got a new window seal. Now we're going to talk about some of the mechanical work that I've done. We'll start under the hood. This car got all eight spark plugs fresh, both Valve cover gaskets are fresh with L-ring or OE quality parts, uh, so no leaks whatsoever under the hood. I did the lower oil pan gasket as well. Oil change, power steering change, power steering hoses between the reservoir and the cooler, so no leaks there. Cabin air filters, engine air filters. I already mentioned the plugs. I cleaned everything up in here. These hoses are nice and taut. Um, I did use Castrol 10W60 oil and a genuine BMW filter. That's about all the maintenance this car needs under here. This thing is ready to rock. Underneath the car, I did the motor mounts, I did the transmission mounts, I did the drive shaft centering sleeve, I did the drive shaft um, center support bearing and the butyl tape on top. We did the rear lower control arm, H arm or swing arm bushings with power flex. Thanks, Nate. That DIY sucked, but we got it done. I did the rear differential mounts. The rear rear differential mounts are lemp order. The front rear differential mount is a unicorn egg, as it's called from Jed. It's a solid bushing that prolongs the life of not only the bushing, but that subframe mount as well. It's kind of a weak point on the E39. I have two, or the M5, I have two aluminum M5 rear subframes. Those are the rear bushings there. So I have the genuine or the um, OEM lem order mounts in there. And then the front mount is that bracket hanging off with the bolt through it, and that's where the solid bushing goes. Also with the suspension, I did the front curved control arms uh, with Miley HD parts, so those are solid and ready to go. And then I did the front stabilizer links as well. I'm gonna spend a minute talking about the shifter here because this is kind of a big job that most every M5 owner is gonna want to tackle or have to tackle at some point during ownership. When we had the drive shaft out of this car, that's the time to do it, so we just went ahead and did it. Um, obviously, we, we put the black knob on there. I talked about the wood before. Um, but under the black knob is a 545i E60 short shifter, uh, which is my favorite shifter for the E39 by far. It's the one I have in my own car. And then I went ahead and replaced all of the shifter carrier bushings as well. Um, the ones in the back, the one in the front, the, the pin, everything that you can replace in there, I've replaced. And uh, you just got to feel this. It is tight. It is really crisp. Every gear glides right where you'd expect it to be. It's a really good feeling shifter. Uh, I did the transmission fluid. I changed the differential fluid. We just bled the brakes last weekend. So all the fluids in this car are fresh and ready to go. Service that predates my time with the car includes a fuel pump and filter back in 2017, which is excellent news moving forward. That's kind of a thing you've got to worry about, but uh, this one's already been done relatively recently. Other services back on the East Coast include your generic brakes and white wipers and some sensors here and there. Uh, but I'll say it again, I know I keep saying it, this car doesn't need anything. You can get in this car today, drive it to New York, 
in a couple of days and then drive it back. You could even aim to beat Rory's record if, if you're really ambitious. Uh, but this thing's ready to go. There, there's not a drop underneath the car. I've checked the belly pan. Everything's clean and dry. It doesn't smell like anything. I mean, the inside the inside smells like Zeno Z9, which is what I've used to clean and condition the interior. Um, and it's just a nice kind of a clean leather smell. After the suspension work I mentioned was done, um, I did have the car aligned and all the tires rebalanced. So this is a car that is smooth, quiet, and composed at any speed. Next up, we'll talk a little bit about the history of the car. So I was able to pick this car up from an auction up in Van Nuys, which is Los Angeles, California, and I had it brought down here to San Diego. Um, and unfortunately, this car does have a California salvage title. And I have a Carfax available that shows a couple minor incidents. Unfortunately, not much more description than front left or front right. Here's what I will say though. Everything I've taken apart in the front of the car, I did the headlights, I pulled the front bumper off to get a look back there. And I found that the bumper carrier, the steel part of the bumper behind the plastic part, um, is original to the car. So is the bumper carrier that I removed. This car has not been in accidents that required major chassis reconstruction or body work or anything like that. This car drives straight, it drives really well, it pulls like a freight train. Um, I am pretty certain that this car was totaled due to a broken windshield. They are of an age now where an insurance company looks at a 20 year old 5 Series and a windshield installed at a dealer is probably $1,200 with genuine BMW glass and they just write the thing off. There was some broken glass inside the car when I took delivery of it. All of that has since been cleaned and removed and, and vacuumed and the windshield itself is new, um, not without the occasional little chip from highway test miles and such. but. Uh, that's actually the worst chip right there next to the logo. In full disclosure, it does have a California salvage title. So what we've done is take it to um, a couple things. They do a, a mechanical inspection, they do a brake and safety inspection, and then they do a smog inspection or an emissions inspection here in California. And all three of those things passed immediately flying colors, no warnings whatsoever. We have that paperwork in hand and uh, the next owner of this car, when it is titled in their name, it is immediately eligible for a rebuilt title. Okay, so these cars are way too fun to not take it for a little drive, so let's do that. Um, show you, uh, unfortunately, you can't really feel how it drives because you're just watching on a screen right now, uh, but we can certainly take a listen and a look to how this thing feels and drives. Uh, so we'll get seatbelt on here. All the lights are gone again. Parking brakes off. Um, this clutch feels great. I do not have a record of it being replaced, but um, Nate and I have driven this car pretty well. We've put a couple thousand miles on this car. In fact, about 20, 2,300 miles in the past couple of months. We took it out in the California desert, out in Imperial County, kind of off the Salton City and the Salton Sea. Um, we put a lot of miles on it. We drove the car hard for a bit, and not once did it ever skip a beat. The clutch has never slipped or, or shuttered. Uh, this is a car that drives really, really well. Uh, I've driven about 26 E39 M5s before, so I feel like I have a little bit of credence to make that. Uh, to make that claim. It does have stock exhaust, which I'm not used to. I'm very used to the Eisenman and the Rogue on my car, so this is a little bit of a little bit of a change. Uh, but it's it's really refined. And after having a system on my car for a while, it's a lot of fun. Uh, but sometimes it's nice to be in this and just you know not be the forefront of everyone's attention. The RPM warning lights have gone off, but the oil's still cool. Plus I'm in an office complex. I'm not gonna push this car. Kind of just get a sense though. The interior is pretty quiet. At the split folds, you do get a little bit of leather on leather noise um, in the back from the split folds, minorly rubbing, uh, but not much. And we're going over some bumps and some water trays in this parking lot. If you've never driven one of these cars before, maybe you've driven a 530 or 540, and those are great, great cars in their own right, but it is not an M5. It's truly, truly a different experience. It's a different beast. You can even hear at just 3,000 RPM. It's such a cool sound. Another thing I'll note here, I know we're at low speed, but uh, I feel a lot of car, a lot of these things have synchro grind, which to me is just kind of evidence that they've been driven by somebody who uh, maybe isn't the best at shifting or downshifting or hooking up gears and um, 
I don't know, this is one of the better transmissions I've felt. If they were easier to swap, I'd take it for my own car, but yeah, you know, not gonna do that. <laughs> um, everything in here feels really good. Uh, that's just my, my overall point is, um, if you guys have seen the videos on the channel, I have nearly completely rebuilt that car. Engine, driveline, suspension, brakes, um, you know, this car has not had that sort of major work done outside of the uh, rear differential bushings and I inspected the subframe bushings at the same time and, and they're solid, uh, but this car drives really well. Another thing to look for when you're driving a car with PDC is put it in reverse. If you get a really long beep, that means the system doesn't work. And uh, that's originally how this car was, but I, as I said, I replaced the one sensor. So if I back towards the pull behind the car, we get the beeps. It shows us that we're about to hit something and screw up our nice bumper. So that's a good sign. Another thing to, to, uh, to kind of check out is that mirror. Look at the passenger mirror. When you put that in reverse, it should fold down. And this one does, indicating a good motor over there. Another thing we can check is that button. And in full disclosure, the driver's side mirror is a hair slower than the passenger side. But both mirrors do fold in and out with that button. Another thing you check for is the mirror glass. If the mirror glass is all yellow, you've either got a bad temp sensor or the seals in the mirror glass have failed. These uh, pieces of glass, which are about $450 a piece new, are not yellow. They are nice and clear and still work. Another demo of the mirrors. Another thing I like to demo is the BMW diamond key. Hit the center button to lock, the beeper, the lights, all the lock actuators work for lock and unlock. Something else you can check as you lock the car is the little clown nose on the bottom of the rear view mirror. That should blink immediately when you hit the lock button and then it should flash slowly after and until it's unlocked. If it flashes rapidly for five or 10 seconds and then slowly, that indicates a fault somewhere in the locking system of the car, the interior motion sensor, door lock actuators, hood sensor, trunk sensor. So we'll try it on this car, we'll hit the lock. And a nice slow blink indicating a functioning security system. I apologize for the change of pace here, it's the next day, but uh, I wanted a quick clip in here just in full disclosure to go around and, and show some of the imperfections on the car. Um, I always liked, as a prospective buyer in my time or helping other people buy cars, I really liked when you would find a listing online and the last couple of photos or the last blurb in the description was kind of a, uh, you know, it's, it's a 20 year old car at this point. This one has 138,000 miles. That's more than halfway to the moon this car has traveled. Um, so I like to be able to know like what are the, what are the, the, short, the shortcomings? Where are the dings? Where are the scratches? What am I working with? I just always like to see it as a buyer, so I'm gonna do the same thing as a seller. Um, probably the worst thing condition-wise on this car would be the rear bumper, and you certainly don't notice it from six feet, but get up close, and I do believe it to be 100% original to the car. See, there's a little crack right below that PDC sensor. There's the occasional scruff, scuff and scrape on the corner. Um, absolutely nothing major but I just wanted to point that out. A couple little marks around the car. Uh, the door handles have seen some paint fade. They're a little bit lighter. You can kind of see some, some scratching in the clear coat on there. Um, certainly would be possible and, and relatively easy to have those resprayed, uh, but they are not as perfect as they once were. We'll get a look at the handles on the other side as well. Um, and then like all of them, um, in fact, my car is doing the same thing. I don't know if it's the clear coat or since this is plastic and this is metal, it, maybe it absorbs more heat in the sun. I don't know how it works. Uh, but kind of the same thing on the trunk spoiler. It's very minor, uh, but it is not perfect. This might be the worst one here. You can kind of see some of the scratches in that if I get that in focus and up to the driver's handle as well. Um, and then there's the, uh, the occasional ding or scratch or small chip. There's nothing major. Um, on this car, but it, it has been used and it's existed on this imperfect planet for two decades. It will be two decades in April. Um, see if I can get a look down the side and, and maybe you'll see, you know, the occasional little ripple. As far as the front bumper goes, when I had it off, I was able to find a build date. I believe it was 20, was it 16 or 18? It was not long ago that this was replaced. It is a genuine BMW front bumper, which I was happy to see, but uh, there is a scuff 
down here that you've really got to get down and look at. Um, somewhere in the front, yeah, right here, there's a little bit of a scrape in the paint uh, that is not cracked. Everything is, is solid uh, as far as mechanical attachments, all that's good. And then we're on top of the trunk lid right now. And somewhere I was just able to see in the right light right there. There's a little ding in that sheet metal right on the trunk lid as well. And because it's an E39, we must look in the gas door to see the traditional bubbling. Um, no outright exposed rust or cheap repairs, but uh, that is pretty typical for what we see on, on cars that spend any amount of time in the east. As far as the interior, it's pretty self-explanatory, but you know, the driver's seat uh, seats generally do show a little bit of wear. I have not spent a lot of time conditioning these or uh, using any products outside of Zeno Z9, which is a light cleaner, uh, which I used a, a very light uh, brush from Swissvax actually to uh, kind of agitate any soils out of the leather. And the passenger seat, as always, is in a little bit better shape since it doesn't see the same amount of wear or the same amount of use. Uh, but overall, this is a very clean, complete, unmolested car. And finally, I can't post a for sale video of a car without telling you what I want for it. That number is $16,999. Uh, just a hair under $17,000. I've looked at a lot of these cars. I've, I've bought several of them now for myself or the business. And, uh, you know, I, I know what they take to get in the right condition. And this car is there. This is an opportunity to own a car that doesn't need a list of things done to it. Anything you look at really below probably mid 30s is going to have a list of things that it needs. Brakes and tires and all the things I've mentioned. Um, the brakes on this car, well over half remaining. It did pass the California safety inspection, uh, which is primarily focused around brakes. Um, there's no lip on the front rotors. I can't really film that, but I can run my finger off that rotor and there's zero lip whatsoever. They are genuine BMW front and rear pads and rotors and parking brake hardware. All of that's ready to go. Um, you know, this is just an opportunity to have a sorted car, a turnkey sorted car that unless you want to wrap it or paint that rear diffuser a different color or put those halo, those uh, different halo bulbs in it, doesn't need any modifications. Please feel free to reach out anytime to me, Ryan at e39source.com. I'm very responsive via email. I look forward to your comments, inquiries, concerns, or, uh, aggressive and respectful offers. We'll talk in a future e39source video. Thanks for watching.